Christ, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. Eddie the Magic Monk. Eddie the Magic Monk. Eddie the Magic Monk. Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another uh, calculus lesson. Today we're going to learn to anti-differentiate using partial fractions. So what does that mean? So when you are anti-differentiating a function, finding the area under the function. So anti-differentiate, let's say, x to the power of 2 with respect to x. Okay, obviously there's only x here. But let's say I want to anti-differentiate it. I would uh, use the formula where you add 1 to the power and then divide that, divide by that number again, plus c. So that's very quick, very easy to anti-differentiate. But if you want to anti-differentiate, anti-differentiate something harder. Let's say I have 3x divided by... Uh, something in brackets, x minus 2, x plus 1. x minus 2, x plus 1. You want to anti-differentiate that. Oh, forgot the dx. So that becomes very hard because where do you plus the power? It's not very obvious. What do you do? Okay, so... In order to do this, we need to go back to the very beginning. Okay, going back to grade 3 maths, for example. And we're going to analyze how this fraction was made up. Okay, now let's go back to a very simple uh, fraction. Okay, adding two fractions together. Adding two fractions together. Let's say I have... 2 over 3 plus 5 over 6. Okay, just two random fractions. How do you add them? Now, if you guys remember, uh, a way of adding fractions is to make sure the denominators are the same. But we're not going to do that. We're going to multiply the denominators together. And we're going to make the top... Um, whatever is the numerator here times by the denominator on the other side plus whatever is the numerator here times by the denominator on the other side. Okay, and we are going to get um, 18 on the bottom and on the top we're going to get 12 plus 15 which is uh, 27, okay, 27 over 18, okay, so now just to make sure you guys believe me, believe that that's the answer, I'm going to put that into Google just to show you guys, so 2 over 3 plus 5 over 6 is 1.5, and 27 over 18, also 1.5. So that's the answer. Okay, that's definitely the answer. So that's doing it a very long way, but it shows you the structure of how to add two fractions. Okay, so now we're going to apply the same concept with this, with this fraction. Okay, so I'm going to put that fraction over on the right hand side. And on the bottom, I have x minus 2, x plus 1. Okay, so this now matches this. And this now matches this. I know it doesn't look the same, but we're trying to just bear with me for a second. So therefore, if this matches this, then when we are combining the fractions, I then want to put x minus 2 on the left and x plus 1 on the right. 
and then I want to put uh, well, we don't know what to put here. We don't know what to put here because it's very hard to match this with this right now. So I'm just going to put A and B. I'm just going to put A and B there. Okay. So now if I now leave the right hand side, okay, so I'm going to leave the right hand side as it is 3x over x minus 2x plus 1. So how would I work on the left? What will the left hand side become? Okay, the left hand side will become, as you guys remember, when I'm combining fractions, it's the bottom times the bottom. So it'll be x minus 2 times x plus 1. And then the top becomes what's on the top multiplied by the denominator on the other side plus what is on the top multiplied by the bottom on the other side. Okay, so that is now being turned into this using some very basic fraction manipulation. So keep going from that. You can see on both sides, the bottom of the fractions are equal. So then we can uh, get rid of that because if you're dividing by the same thing, then there's no point in doing it. Um, I can just now put 3x equals a bracket x plus 1 plus b bracket x minus 2. Okay, now here's a little bit of a problem. We got no idea what a is, we got no idea what b is. Okay, so we need to find a and b. But what is x? x can be anything you want. Okay, x, the reason why we have x there is because x can be anything you want. So let's just assign a number to x to help us find out what a and b is. So let x be negative 1. You'll see why I picked negative 1 in a second. So negative 1, I'm going to put it inside wherever x occurs. So a bracket negative 1 plus 1 plus b bracket negative 1 minus 2 equals 3 times negative 1. Okay. So then I'm going to continue with that. I'm going to go a negative 1 plus 1 is 0 plus b times negative 3 equals negative 3. Okay, so then a times 0 is gone. Negative 3b equals negative 3. b equals 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So we found b. That's really cool. So let's now find A. Okay, so the reason why I picked negative 1 is because I knew negative 1 plus 1 would equal 0, and that will help me eliminate A. 0 helped me eliminate A. So now let's see if I can help me help myself eliminate B by letting X equal 2. Let X equal 2, and that will help me get rid of B. Let x equal 2, so now I have a bracket 2 plus 1 plus b bracket 2 minus 2 equals 3 times 2. Every time x occurs, I change it to 2. So now I have uh, 3a plus 0b equals 6. So 0b is gone, obviously, 0 times b is 0. So 3a equals 6, a equals 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Very good. Okay, so now what do we do? a is 2, b is 1. Okay, so let's now go back to the start here. a is 2, b is 1. Okay, I can now fill that in. Right, just double check. A is definitely 2, B is definitely 1. 
So I can now write A is 2, B is 1, like that. Okay, so I found what A is, found what B is. Okay, so I'm just going to write that somewhere else to make it very clear. So that equals 2 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x plus 1. So figuring this out, how is that useful to us? Well, if you go back to this problem where we had to integrate something huge, I can now rewrite this as the new format that we found. So I'm not even going to write it out again. I'm just going to copy copy and paste it across. Okay. Just going to put that here. Okay. And I'm going to integrate this with respect to x. Okay. So now that makes it very easy to integrate using this very simple formula. If you guys forgot, um, if I have integral of uh, 1 over x, then um, the answer is ln x plus c. Okay, so if you guys remember that, Okay, to integrate 2 over x minus 2, that's just ln x minus 2. Okay, because ln x minus 2 is going to differentiate, okay, or you can write it as this, uh, y equals ln x, y dash equals 1 over x. Alright, so ln x minus 2 is going to give you 1 over x minus 2, but because we have a 2 at the front, I'm going to multiply that by 2 here. And then I'm going to plus ln x plus 1 plus c. Okay, if you have no idea how to integrate uh, 1 over x, make sure you look at some of my other videos, but Basically, that is the answer. How to integrate using partial fractions. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.